What's going on, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Off Base. My name is Hunter, also known as Hunter himself on Twitter. And in today's episode, we'll cover all things sober MLB for game week 25, including injury news, rookie call-ups, starting pitching, bullpen options, and stacks. And guys, we are without Nick this week. He is on his honeymoon. I believe there was some paddle boarding on the itinerary, so we'll have to ask him about that when he comes back next week. So we won't have his analysis or the soul ranks in this episode, but that's all right. I have plenty of good information to give you guys from my newsletter, which comes out tomorrow morning, and I'm here to prepare you guys for game week 25, which looks like a pretty good game week. Uh, pitching's not great, but I do think there are some good offensive spots that we'll get to later. So without further ado, we will jump into our first segment, and I pulled up a graphic here for injury news. All right, so nothing too notable this week when I was looking at injuries. Uh, the one guy coming back, pictured here all the way to the left, is Kenta Maeda. He's returning from the IL. He will make his start Friday tomorrow versus Detroit. So good matchup. Uh, not sure if I would be looking at him this soon. Uh, hasn't pitched for a while. He's been on the IL. Uh, there are some other Twins pitchers that I do like against Detroit this week. But I think I'm out of Maeda for now. So he's returning. And then the guys that I have out are Gio Urshela. He is out for the season after fracturing his left pelvis. Corey Kluber placed on the 15-day IL with right shoulder inflammation. Alejandro Kirk placed on the 10-day IL with left hand, with a left hand laceration and contusion. That sounds bad. I think he was hit by a pitch there. Uh, J.P. Crawford day to day after colliding with Harrison Bader in the outfield. Uh, Dansby Swanson is day to day after being struck on the right wrist by a pitch. Willie Calhoun expects to be placed on the IL with a left quad injury. And Ross Stripling was placed on the 50 aisle with a grade one lower back strain. So maybe the most notable guy who got injured is Gio Urshela. I mean, out for the season, not great. Um, not that he's been anything too special there for the Twins, but he will be out for the season. So I'm assuming his cards have taken a big hit in the marketplace, haven't looked at it. So with that, we can move on to our next segment. And let me pull up the graphic here. It would help if I was good at the graphics. All right, rookie action. A little more interesting stuff here. Um, all right, so one guy I want to talk about that isn't pictured here because he does not have a so rare card is Emmett Sheehan. That's right, Emmett Sheehan of the Dodgers, rookie pitcher. He made his debut six days ago against the Giants and struck out three over six innings. Uh, so in that start, he gave up zero hits and just two walks was pulled after 89 pitches. So I know what you guys are thinking. You guys are thinking, who on earth is Emmett Sheehan? And I also didn't know. I had to do some research. He was a six-round pick back in 2021. Uh, the Dodgers are dealing with an injury to Julio Urias, which is why Sheehan was added to the rotation. Um, I think he's expected to make at least one more start here. I mean, it looks good in that first start. I mean, no hitter. Um, but we'll have to see. We'll have to see what she can. Not a top, top draft pick or anything. Not a top prospect. Um, but he is pitching in this game week. So against uh, against Houston. Pretty tough matchup there. Good series. I can't wait for that Astros-Dodgers series. That'll be a good one. Um, little uh, World Series rematch we got there um yeah a few seasons ago anyways um <laughs> all right so that's enough with Emma Sheehan some guys that we have pictured here Ellie De La Cruz obviously there was tons of hype around Ellie De La Cruz when he first got called up um the Reds are in a good spot this week and I'll be talking about them later I really like the spot for the Reds at home at Great American Ballpark weather's warming up that park is so good for homers um, but Ellie has, um, has multi-hit games in four out of his last five games. Uh, his limited price is still very expensive. I think he's over a hundred still for his limited card. Um, not surprising. Still a lot of hype around him. Not as much maybe as, as after the first two games where he was going crazy on Twitter and, and everyone was all about Ellie, but, um, yeah, he's made that Reds lineup a lot stronger. Uh, there's a few guys on that team, uh, Matt McClain, another, Rookie there, um, you know, they've been heating up over there in Cincinnati. All right. We also have someone I really want to talk about here. Someone who's been awesome 
Um, still a rookie, did play last year at the end of the year, but he's doesn't quite feel like a rookie. He feels like he's been around so long with how good he's already playing. That's Corbin Carroll. Um, the Diamondbacks were a stack that I loved this past game week. Actually highlighted in my newsletter. Really liked them. They had four games. Uh, they were playing at Miller Park against the Brewers. Uh, the first game against Corbin Burns, I was actually kind of on the Diamondbacks, even though they were facing Burns, and, and they went out there and put up like six runs against him. Uh, really like that matchup. I mean, all those lefties at Miller Park, which is great for left-handed power. Um, so they've been doing really well. They have another game. I think they're playing right now, actually, at Washington. Um, I think Corbin, excuse me, Corbin Carroll had at least one hit in that game so far. I was watching it earlier, but he's been really good. Um, he doesn't have to do all that much for the rest of the season to win the NL Rookie of the Year. I mean, the numbers this guy has. Let's take a peek at some of these numbers. 300 average on the dot, 16 homers, 40 RBIs, 22 stolen bases. Uh, the 22 stolen bags are tied for fourth in the league, tied with Bobby Witt Jr. Uh, really does it all. I mean, average, power, speed. I mean, this guy's incredible. And he's, you know, a lot of power for someone who's not that big. If you watch him play, I mean, one of the, one of the smaller players that we'll see. So really, really fun guy to watch. He makes that Dimebacks lineup really strong. Uh, they're definitely a team that I'm looking at going forward. I mean, top 10, top six in a lot of the major offensive categories that I highlighted in my newsletter last week. So definitely someone to have an eye on. Of course, I got his unique card pictured here. Uh, probably worth a lot. Didn't check. <laughs> but um, anyways, the other guy, uh, two more guys I want to mention, both pictured here. Uh, Taj Bradley, talk about him quick. Um, he is... Second, if we take out Jacob DeGrom, because he's out for the year, he is second in strikeout rate, 34.5% on the year for Taj Bradley. Just keeps striking guys out and isn't walking too many guys either. Um, low walk rate, high strikeouts. I mean, he is someone that I'm watching for sure. And that limited price that I got pictured there, um, I think it was under $20, guys. I mean, affordable now for Taj. So... Someone looking at absolutely. All right, the last guy I want to mention is Joe Adele. Uh, Nick talks about him a lot on this show, um, and maybe you guys have seen this already if you're active on Twitter and follow some MLB accounts. But there was a viral video of Joe Adele hitting the longest home run ever tracked by Statcast yesterday. It was 514 feet. Uh, this was in a minor league game, of course. Uh, Adele has been in the minors all season, but o Adele. I keep on. I keep wanting to say Odell. Joe Adele, it's like Odell, like Odell Beckham Jr. Um, anyways, Joe Adele currently leads all minor leaguers with 20 home runs. Uh, so I wish we could have him called up soon, especially for this week like when the Angels are going to Colorado. That would be awesome, facing two lefties there, Joe Adele being a right-handed power bat. But we'll have to wait a little longer on him. But um, can't wait to see him come back in the majors. He, he was up in the majors before. He's had a really high strikeout rate, like really high, and was, uh, was sent back down. But hope we can see him get called, called back up soon. All right, moving on from rookies, we're going to move into starting pitching. And the first guy that I want to talk about, guys, is Pablo Lopez facing Detroit. I alluded to a pitcher on the Twins that I liked against Detroit this week because we love picking on Detroit. Um, so when I was looking at pitchers overall, it looked kind of rough. Didn't find a lot. A lot of people's aces aren't going over the weekend. They're going to be starting out Monday, Tuesday, just the way the rotations have worked for these teams. Um, but Pablo may be my favorite option this weekend. Uh, he will bring his 13th best XFIP at 3.53 and, uh, and his fifth best uh, K per nine rate at 11 even into a matchup against the weak Detroit lineup that ranks 10th worst in strikeout rate, 23.3%. Fourth worst in ISO, 0.135, and second worst in WOBA, 0.294. Uh, I will note that the Tigers have been a tad bit better as of late on offense. Over the last two weeks, they rank seventh in ISO at 0.190 and 12th in WOBA, 0.331. Um, heating up a little bit. You know, this is definitely a team I expect to be in the bottom five in a lot of offensive statistics at the end of the season, but, you know, they do have some. Some good young bats there, you know, Torkelson, uh, Bradley Green still injured. But, um, yeah, I mean, they they got to, to Spencer Strider. 
last week, surprisingly, three homers in the first inning, as mentioned on last week's show. Um, I do expect this team to, to, to regress back, and, and I'm not worried about Pablo here. $10 for his limited price. I mean, way too cheap. Some of those stats they just uh, read off at the beginning. Strikeout rate. Um, the ex-FIP look really good for, for Pablo. So I like him a lot. The other guy I want to talk about is Top Glass now. Got his unique card picture here. Uh, he's kind of a poor outing against Baltimore where he surrendered six runs, four innings of work. But prior to that, he looked sharp, even in tough matchups against Texas, Boston, and the Dodgers. So that says a lot when you can be pretty good. I mean, you know, it's not like he had any ceiling games or anything, but, but pretty good against those three good offenses. Um, so in the small sample size of 20 innings pitched on fan graphs, he ranks eighth in strikeout per nine rate, 11.72, and 23rd in XFIP, 3.52. So Glass now, you know, always had that big strikeout rate, uh, still has it. I mean, eighth overall, granted small sample size, but you know, even, even with the full season, look at the last few years. I mean, he is one of the best strikeout pitchers in the league. The Rays always seem to do that. Um, so yeah, looking at him a lot this week, he's facing the Royals. Um, they strike out the sixth highest rate, 24.2%. They rank second to last in WRC plus 83. They also rank behind only Oakland in overall record. If you're into that, they're 20 and 54, very bad record for KC. Um, some more stats that I glossed over for glass now, but uh, his issues primarily have been with walks, 4.62 walk per nine rate this year in that limited sample size. And he also struggles with home runs a bit, 1.78 home run per nine. Uh, but he makes up for this with that elite strikeout rate, like I said. So it's interesting to see him, you know, in this good matchup. And, and can he have a ceiling game in a matchup like this against Casey? I think he can. And I also noted it'll be noted in my newsletter that glass now now appears to be unaffected by last year's mid-season sticky substance crackdown despite him blaming the rule change on his ucl tear one year ago if you remember uh, they changed the sticky substance rule last year mid-year where they had to get it checked after they left the mound and glass now i think he was using some sticky stuff and he was getting away with it couldn't get away with it anymore maybe he was hiding his hair he's got that long hair as you can see in the picture i don't know he was told he couldn't use it, so he wasn't using it. And then he tore his UCL. And then in a press conference, he blamed the injury on the new rule. So still pitching good, even though, you know, probably not using the sticky stuff. So anyways, I linked a video to that in my newsletter. You can check it out tomorrow. And his limited price is $19, which is still affordable. I know we just said Pablo's $10. $10. I'd rather have Pablo, to be honest with you. But 19 for Glass now, pretty good. Pretty good for him. All right. Well, I also have pictured here Barrios and Gilbert. Did not write them up in my newsletter, but I do notice that uh, Barrios, I did notice, excuse me, that Barrios is facing Oakland this, this week. And whenever I see Oakland, man, I have to look at the opposing pitchers. It's just what you do, it's just the rule. So, you know, uh, Toronto gets Oakland this week, Jose Barrios. Number's not great, but he, he's been better than he was last year. If I recall last year, he was, I mean, one of the worst pitchers in the league. He just didn't have it put together, um, was struggling a lot, but I have his limited card. And uh, he's been he's been serviceable, better than than I thought. So he gets Oakland. I think that's a pretty good matchup there. I, I did note him. Uh, Logan Gilbert, talk about him a lot, man. But, you know, he's just so good. Uh, I don't love the matchup on the road uh, facing Baltimore, though. You know, kind of a, a tough matchup. I know, you know, Baltimore without Cedric Mullins, you know, dealing with some injuries there. Not really the Baltimore we saw earlier. I know that, you know, first few weeks of the season, they were just my favorite stack. Love Baltimore. So much respect for their offense. Um, slow down a bit, you know. So I like Logan Gilbert here. Uh, some other guys. We, we have Garrett Cole this week, guys. Garrett Cole is pitching. He's got a $35 limited price. It's up there. People love Garrett Cole. Got the Yankees tax. But he's facing Texas. And I have so much respect for this Texas offense, man. I think they're like second overall. You know, if you tally up all, you know, look, look across their offensive metrics, I mean, they're up there. Certainly the power department. 
you know, and I, I don't like targeting <laughs> teams that can hit, can hit home runs, um, can hit a lot of home runs, right? I mean, you could be having a good outing, and all of a sudden, you know, you give up a three-run bomb and, and, and you're negative. You know, the only way I'll do that is if you got a pitcher with a really high strikeout rate who can make up for those some of those home runs with with strikeouts. Um, maybe someone like a Hunter Green comes to mind. Um, yeah, you know, someone who can strike a lot of people but also gives up some home runs. I think Scherzer for a while was one of those guys. Anyways, all right. Some other guys that I have written down here before we move on to our next segment. Uh, we have Corbin Burns this week. He's facing Cleveland. Uh, not my favorite matchup. I know they're they're not threatening uh, from a from a woba standpoint. Um, still a pretty solid offense. You know, not not really a a, a high upside offense to target. Uh, we also have Michael Walker versus Washington. Kind of the same boat for Washington. I mean, not a threatening offense, but they don't strike out. You know, they're like bottom three in, in strikeout rate, something like that. Not my favorite offense to target. So, all right. We've exhausted pitcher guys. I mentioned my, my favorite guys at the top. Um, if you have those guys, I would prioritize them for sure. Um, all right, moving on. Bullpen. Our bullpen graphic is back. And we, I didn't mention this at the beginning of the show, but we have two teams on this weekend slate that are playing just two games this week. That is the Cubs and the Cardinals. Usually you get all three games for every team on the weekend slate, but this week is different. Cubs and Cardinals not playing tomorrow. So I think we can safely avoid those relief pitchers, uh, which is sad for me. I have a lot of Adbert Aldele, Aldele, right? And Giovanni Gallegos. That's unfortunate because they've been good and I like them. But if you're playing two games, I mean, you're getting a huge disadvantage, you know, compared to the other, the other teams, the other relief pitchers. So we want to avoid those guys. The other strategy that we can use here that I employ a lot, I talk about a lot in my newsletter, is we want to target series that we think can stay close. That's because we need our closer to have a save situation, meaning the team can't be up by more than three runs. They have to be up by three or less runs so the closer can come into the game and earn a save. Right? If you're up so many runs, why bring your closer? You know, you might as well throw out your first baseman to close the game, right? You don't need to waste your closer on that. So we want to target games that we think can stay close. And what I did was I highlighted four games that I think can stay close. So we have the Mets and the Philly series, I think can stay close. The Rangers and the Yankees series. We have Milwaukee and Cleveland. And we have the aforementioned Houston and Dodgers series, which is going to be an awesome series. Two really good teams um, going at it. So I think those series can stay close. And what I've done is I've highlighted the closers in those games. Uh, only four of them pictured here, but David Robertson for the Mets. I like Jose Alvarado. We have him here for the Phillies. Nick talks about him a lot. Um, really great pitcher there. Uh, returning, uh, He returned from injury recently, and he looks really good. We have Will Smith at $9 for the Rangers. Clay Holmes the closer for the Yankees at $5 for his limited floor price. Devin Williams at eight facing Emmanuel, Emmanuel class a at 21 and you know, people love Emmanuel class. A. I mean, 21 floor price in your limited card for a guy that's declining, maybe getting older, not as good. Nick had him as a, a uh, sell high recently. I don't know. I don't know about that play. Maybe if you have them play them, but Maybe that's overpriced in the market. I think I, I might think so. We also got Ryan Presley, the closer for the Astros, and Evan Phillips, four dollars closer for the the Dodgers. Um, yeah, those are, those are some of the guys that I mentioned. Um, if you want to, you know, if you have any relievers on those teams as well, definitely play them. You know, I only note the closers in my newsletter just to make it simple and easy, and you know. A lot of variance with, with, with the bullpen players. I think just keep it easy. Play closers. Those are usually the guys that we see at the top of the leaderboard when it's all said and done. Um, so, yeah, those are some guys I think you can pick from this week. All right. Moving on. And, guys, we don't have – oh, we don't want that. I got to take that one out. We don't want that one. All right. <laughs> I was going to say we do not have the three-for-three three section this week. 
because Nick, like I said, he's on his honeymoon. Uh, no so ranks this week, and that's all right. We will skip that section. This week, we'll be back to it next week. So this is our last section, stacking matchups. Um, and this is probably the most exciting section, guys, because like I said, we have some good offenses this week. Pretty excited about a lot of these spots. All right, this, the first thing I want to talk about is the Angels. And that's why I pictured Mike Trout here. And guess what? The Angels headed to Coors Field this weekend. That's right. We have Mike Trout in Coors Field. And this whole Angels lineup gets a huge boost. I mean, they are going to be facing Kyle Freeland, Chase Anderson, and Austin Gomber of the Rockies. We talk about it a lot in the show, but the Rockies pitching staff is so not good at all. I was trying to be nice there by saying not good instead of terrible. But, I mean, we just keep stacking against them. I mean, two lefties, Gomber and Freeland against all these righties, you know, these power righties and the Angels and Otani, lefty. We can still play them, of course. So Angels, they rank 13th in ISO, 0.164, 12th in Woba, 0.329 against left-handed pitching. They'll face two of them, like I already said. Um, Brandon Drury, $11. Mike Trout, 72. Uh, Shohei Otani, 287. Guys, I know that's a lot, but he pitches and he hits. You can play him at both spots, and he's elite at both. So maybe it's warranted. Hunter Renfro, $6. Man, disappointment for my friend Renfro this season, unfortunately. Has not been good. But $6 in this spot could be a good pickup. You know, I have him on my squad. I might play him this week. I already got him. Why not play him? And Taylor Ward, I noted as well, $7. So Angels, man, as a whole, looking looking good. All right. The other game, that's right, not just stack, but game that I want to talk about is the Braves and the Reds. Uh, I was originally just going to recommend the Braves here, but guys, the Reds' offense has been awesome. They are going to be also facing the weaker part of the Atlanta rotation. I mean, they will get Charlie Morton on Sunday. They will not get Spencer Strider here. Um, the Reds have won 11 games in a row. That's right. And they are leading the NL Central with a 40-35 and 35 record. I definitely have that wrong. 40-35. and 35. Is that right? Guys, that's right. I don't know why that sounded wrong. I second-guess myself, but that is right. Um, yeah, anyways, I just, I don't know why that sounded like too many games, but we are already in almost July. Okay. So we just saw some fireworks in this ballpark in the Rockies three game series this week. And I expect to see even more when the Braves come to town, Braves being a much better offense than the Rockies, um, Atlanta and Cincinnati, both rank in the top 10 in ISO and Woba over the last two weeks, Atlanta being number one in both those categories by Quite a bit, actually, but Cincinnati, you know, top eight, I think, you know, for, for both those categories, uh, pretty good. Um, I should have just said top eight then, you know, when I wrote it down. But like I said before, Ellie De La Cruz, Matt McClain, Jonathan India, TJ Friedel, Jake Fraley. I mean, both sides of the plate, speed, power. I mean, the Reds are a fun team right now. You know, they were not when we started the season. The Reds were not a fun team when the season started. But they are now. And the prices are, are good. Not on Elliott, right? 119 for his limited floor price. But Friedel, $6. Tends to lead off. Hit a home run yesterday. Pretty good. 23 for Matt McLean, rookie. 22 for Jonathan India. 9 for Jake Fraley. I like that. And the Braves prices, I mean, we, we know. We know they're expensive. Okay? 175, Ronald Acuna Jr. 45 for Ozzy Albies. 36, Austin Riley. 36, Matt Olson. 7. For Marcelo Zuna, no respect for Ozuna. Always cheap, but got some pop. You know, he'll hit five, fifth or sixth for that Braves lineup. I mean, pretty good play, pretty good price. All right. And some other stacks I want to mention, I won't go into as much detail because I'm not profiling them in my newsletter. But some other stacks you can consider here are the Rays and the Blue Jays. The Padres and the Twins. I did include Juan Soto here because the Padres are going to be facing the Nationals. So hashtag revenge game. 
for Juan Soto. He played for the Nationals last year and for like four years before that. So we know the Padres lineup is good, right? They're at full strength, right? Tatis, Machado, Soto, Xander Bogarts, Cronenworth, right? Gary Sanchez now. They're facing Corbin tomorrow, guys. I mean, yeah. Gary Sanchez versus Corbin? I mean, there's a home run right there. So, <laughs> all right. Well, yeah. It's a good matchup. Okay, let's not let's not guarantee any home runs is what I was trying to say because it's baseball. Anything can happen. But we, you know, it, it's a good spot when you have a, a bad lefty versus a lot of those good righties. And one so does a lefty, you know, lefty, lefty, but I still would include him in a stack. All right. So that does it for the show. No three for three this week, like I said. Um, but we'll be back. On Monday, that's right. I say we'll be back because Nick is back next week. We'll be back for the off base Twitter spaces show. Um, we can ask Nick how paddleboarding went on his honeymoon. I'm curious to know. And we can see if he if he uh had time to enter his so rare teams while on his honeymoon. And we can ask him if he did well, or maybe he just took took it off, took the slate off. Who knows? Enjoy the uh enjoy the nice the beach enjoy the weather um all right <laughs> anyways guys i'll go ahead and close out the show kept it pretty short today but i'm excited for this slate uh pitching is not great but it looks like there could be some good offense here and i'm excited to see how it's going to go and excited to see how game week 24 wraps up tonight uh, i should have some pretty high scores i'll recap that in my newsletter tomorrow so thanks for watching everyone and we will see you guys on Monday for the, for the Spaces Show and next week for episode here on YouTube. Bye, everyone.